Introduction to Java Server Pages, JSP. JSP is one of the Java EE components which are mainly used for web application development. Let us see what JSP is. Java Server Pages is an extension of Java Servlet technology, which is also used to generate dynamic HTML pages. JSP pages may contain static HTML or XML components, special JSP tags, and Java codes. In JSP, the Java codes are embedded in HTML. In Servlet, HTML is embedded in Java codes. One of the main needs for JSP is to separate the static presentation logic and dynamic business logic. Presentation logic is the block of codes that defines how we can get the request from the user and present the response to the user. It is normally designed using HTML. Business logic is the block of codes that describe the functionality that we can do. It is normally written in Java. So, we simplify and separate the work profiles of developers and designers. Let's look at how the JSP works. If a request comes for a JSP page, the JSP container translates the JSP page to a servlet. Then the servlet compiles internally and generates the .class file. Finally, the container processes the request and generates the response. We will discuss the lifecycle of JSP in detail shortly. Here are a few advantages of JSP. JSP has many advantages over many of its alternatives. For example, in Servlet, if we made any changes in the HTML content, it needs to recompile that code because HTML is embedded in Java. But in JSP, if any changes to the static content, HTML, will automatically compile and load to the server. So it reduces the compilation time. Also, writing the codes in JSP is easier compared to servlets, i.e., writing HTML codes is easier than writing thousands of print-in statements. However, JSP uses Java to develop the applications must be platform independent and portable. Java Server Pages JSP versus Active Server Pages ASP. ASP is a competing technology from Microsoft. The advantages of JSP over ASP are first the dynamic part is written in Java not VB script or another ASP specific language. So, JSP is more powerful and better suited for complex applications that require reusable components. Second, JSP is portable to other operating systems and web servers. We aren't restricted to Windows and IIS. Lifecycle of a JSP page We have already discussed about the needs and the benefits of Java Server Pages JSP. In the previous chapters, we had discussed about the lifecycle of Servlet. Now we will discuss about the lifecycle of a JSP page. Each and every component of Java EE has its own lifecycle. We will discuss those in the corresponding chapters. The lifecycle of a JSP consists of three methods, i.e. JSP init method, underscore JSP service method, and JSP destroy method. We will discuss about these methods and its structure later in this lesson. Now we look at the steps involved in the execution of a JSP. Here are the steps. JSP page translation. JSP page compilation, loading the class, creating instance of that class, calling the JSP init method, then call the underscore JSP service method, and finally the JSP destroy method. Let us see these steps in detail. Let's start with translation. 
As we discussed earlier, the JSP was translated into servlet, and the servlet executes whenever a request arrives from the browser. The lifecycle starts with the very first time a JSP is requested. As this is the first request for a JSP, then it is passed for checking the syntactical errors and then converted into a servlet source file. Here, the translation includes adding any included files, skipping the JSP comments and leaving any of the HTML comments. We will discuss about the comments later. If you want to see all the translated servlet source files for a particular web application, navigate through this directory. Here, install underscore dir is the installation directory of Tomcat and app underscore name is our web application. Compilation. After translating the JSP to a servlet, the servlet is compiled using the name Java. The compiler that we want is used to compile the Java program. Initialization. After compilation, the container will load the class and create an instance of that class. Then the container calls the JSP init method only once for a servlet instance. This method is used for providing initialization information such as getting resources and initializing variables that are used in the JSP page. Here is the structure of the JSP init method. While writing in JSP, we will write inside the declaration. Once we call this method, we are able to access the servlet methods including the get servlet config. Remember that the config object is used for providing initialization information in the servlet. Execution The codes required for servicing the request, for example, the scriptlets, HTML elements and expressions are placed in this method using the translation of JSP. The underscore JSP service method is the equivalent of the service method for a servlet. Underscore JSP service method is called for each request. The request and response objects are the parameters of this method. The underscore JSP service method makes the implicit objects available to the JSP page. We will discuss about the implicit objects in the upcoming lessons. We cannot override this method within a JSP page. Now let's look at the structure of the underscore JSP service method. Here are the codes for both the cases, i.e. the code snippets for request for a servlet and HTTP servlet. Only the parameters are different in both methods. Removal of JSP The final process in our lifecycle is the removal of JSP page. So, finally, the container calls the JSP destroy method, which removes the JSP from servicing the request. If we want to release the resources associated with the page or clean up any resources required by the JSP, we will define inside this method. This method is like a final method in Java and we aren't sure when it will run. So this is not the efficient way for cleaning the resources. Now we will look at the codes for destroy method. Up until now we discussed the execution of JSP pages and the methods involved in the lifecycle of JSP.